Hi everyone and welcome to this video. In this tutorial we'll create a non-blocking socket server in PHP using the React PHP framework. In the first part we'll create a basic socket server in raw PHP that will be blocked by certain operations in order to illustrate the problem that creating a socket server in PHP presents. And in the second part we'll use the React PHP framework and create a socket server that will not be blocked by such operations as an API call or a database query. Okay, let's get right to it. So our goal is to create a simple socket server that gets a message from client. If the message equals API then it makes an API call. If the message equals to DB, then it queries the database, else it will display a default response message. OK. So we'll start by defining these variables here, the address variable and the port variable, and we'll create a socket using the socket create function then we'll bind our socket to the address and then we'll listen to our socket we'll start an infinite loop and then we'll accept the client if there's a connection then we'll check what the client is sending to us then we'll display it like we received the message and then we'll check if the input is equal to API then we'll make an API call else if it's equal to DB then we'll query the database or else we'll just display a uh, hello client message. So let's make the response variable and uh, send it to the client. And please note that these socket underscore functions are only available if you have the sockets extension installed in your PHP. And we close the connection. And here if we ever get out of the infinite loop we'll close the master socket. Okay, now let's move on to the API and the database call. Let's call two functions here and now let's define them. So first function is get from API. We'll use the file get contents function and the API is running in another Docker container that's why we're using this fancy domain name here. Okay. And uh, the database is running in a different container as well. So I just copied and pasted this configuration host, db, user and password. And I will use PDO to connect to the database. Now let me write a query. And let's imagine that the query will be very slow. So we'll call the sleep function here and let it sleep for five minutes. Okay, so we need to get the result and return the well the count of user IDs. So the basic server is ready, so now let's create a client. The client will be even more basic than the server. Again, let's define the host and the port. And let's open the socket connection. Obviously, if the socket equals false, then we'll call die. And uh, then for the message variable, I will either get it from the terminal 
or I will use the default hello server value. And then I will send the message. Then I will read the response. And uh, I will display the response. And I will close the connection. So this server is pretty basic. Okay, let's go and check it out in the terminal. So let's start the server. And in the other window, I will call the client. And the client gets a message from the server. As you can see. So now let's pass the API parameter and we see that the client is hanging. And it will hang for 10 seconds. Well, because I asked it to sleep for 10 seconds. Let's call it again. And let's go to the other window and call the client there. And you see that the client is hanging too. And the reason for that is that this client is waiting for the previous client to finish. Now let's try the database query, which will hang for 5 seconds. And in the other window, the other client is also waiting. So this problem is quite common. And in programming languages that support threading, like Python for example, we would just run each connection in a separate thread, but in PHP there is only one thread. However, in PHP we can solve this problem in a different way. We can use the technique called event-driven development to handle the connections from the client and also to make the API calls. And we'll use the library called ReactPHP to speed up the process. So, let us install React. Okay, now that React is installed, let's create a new server that will use the event-driven approach. I'll call it reactserver.php. Let me require my autoload files. And I'll start by creating a loop. The loop is basically the core of every React PHP application. Then I will create the server object that will use the loop. But first I need to pass the port and the address and then the loop. And uh, in the next line, I will subscribe to the event called connection. As you see, my subscriber is a simple anonymous function. And then I will display the new connection from somewhere message. And uh, then I will create another subscriber, this time for the connection object for the event called data. So every time the server gets a data from the client, this subscriber will be invoked. And uh, it will echo the received data message, and then it, it will check the data. And if it's either API or DB, then it will do something special. Else, it will just send a basic response message to the client. Uh, I think I'll go take the response message from the basic server. Here. I'll just copy and paste it. And yeah, I'll change this to data. And uh, yeah, the result is hello from server. And then I will close the connection. And finally, I will start the loop. Uh, run. Yep. Uh, now when the data is API or DB, I will make the server wait for 10 seconds. This is just for now. We'll implement proper API and database calls later. So now connection right. Allow sleepy server. And connection end. 
Okay. Uh, now let's go and see what happens. So we'll start the React server and make a simple call. Okay. And now let's make an API call. So the server is waiting. However, other clients can still connect. Let's wait for it to finish. Okay, here's the message. Hello, sleepy server. Let's do it again. And in the meantime, other clients can still communicate with the server, which is good, isn't it? Okay, but we are not completely done here yet. It will be quite fair to say that nobody needs a server that only waits for 10 seconds and, and displays some creepy message. So let's make the API call and see what happens. So let me just copy the file get contents function and bring it into our React server. And let's copy this. Okay. Now let's go and see what happens. Let me restart the server. Okay, this works. And uh, the API call makes the other client hang and wait for the API call to finish. And yeah, now it's done and the other client is finished. And the reason for that is that file get contents is a blocking function. Every time you call it, the execution the execution thread is blocked and uh, other processes simply have to wait. The good news is though that there is a workaround. Instead of using blocking functions such as file get contents and others, you can use asynchronous programming. So let me show you how you can do it. So before we get rid of the file get contents function, let's create a new React HTTP browser object and let's call the method get of that object and pass the URL into that method and then yeah, then is the name of the method into which we will pass the callback function that will be waiting for the response and inside that callback function we'll get a result and then we'll pass that result into our connection. So this should hopefully do it for us. Okay, let's go check it out. Restart the server. Okay, client works. And, and you see, it is working perfectly now. Other clients can still connect while the server is busy with one specific client. So the job is basically done, but here's one more thing before this tutorial is through. You probably remember that we wanted to also implement a database call. So let's implement it in a non-blocking style. By the way, did you know that you can also execute shell scripts in a non-blocking manner? But I'll probably cover it next time. Okay, for the database calls we need to install one package and that is called React MySQL. So let's install it. Alright. And now let's do the code. The first thing we'll need is a MySQL factory that we'll use to create connections. And the factory will create a connection for us, which then will be used to execute queries. Now let's write the query. our sleepy query, make it sleep 10 seconds, 
Uh, I think my DB parameter could use some type hinting here. Because then my PHP storm knows where to look for suggestions. Okay, so we'll execute the query and then the query result object will be a parameter for my callback function. And in that function, I want to send some kind of response to the client. Uh, I will use the print r function here. I hope it will work. Okay, connection end. And uh, it looks like I forgot a semicolon here. Yeah, here. Okay, that should do it for us. So let's go and test it. So let's start the server. Okay, the server is working. Let's make an API call again. It still works, we didn't break anything. And now let's call the DB. Okay. And it works just as good as it does with the API. Which goes to show that our database call is non-blocking. Let's do it again. Yep. And here's the list of the received connections. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial was as helpful for you as it was for me. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and see you in the next video. Bye.